Did you know that back in 1966, the Soviet Union pulled off something totally mind-blowing? They sent Luna 9 to the moon, and it didn't just crash into it. Nope, it softly touched down, making history. But wait, rewind to 1959, when they smashed Luna 2 into the moon, becoming the first humans to hit a celestial body beyond Earth. Super cool, right? Now, fast forward to 2023. Russia gave it another shot with Luna 25, but oops, it ended up crashing, creating another lunar crater and adding to our celestial trash pile. What's really weird, folks, is that it seems like we've gone backward in lunar landings, even though tech should have zoomed ahead. I mean, Russia, Japan, and India all took their turns, and all we've got are epic fails. What's up with that, huh? Why is it so darn tough to land on the moon? Let's dive into this lunar mystery together. Uneven force of gravity. Here's a lunar tidbit that'll blow your mind. So, we all know that Earth's gravity is like that reliable friend who's always there, pulling us evenly towards the core, no matter where we are. But the moon? Oh boy, it's got a wacky sense of gravity. Imagine this, it's like a bumpy roller coaster right up there. Over the years, scientists have scratched their heads over this one. See, the moon's gravity isn't consistent. It's stronger in some spots and weaker in others. It's like the moon can't make up its mind. Those super strong gravitational fields. Well, they tend to pop up over a few impact basins. It's as if these massive asteroid impacts left their mark by piling on extra gravity in those areas. In 2019, scientists stumbled upon a mind-boggling discovery beneath the moon's south pole. We're talking about a mysterious mass, estimated to be a hopping two quadrillion tons. Now, hold on to your space helmets, my friends. Our minds might wander to ancient alien motherships buried there, but let's keep it real. We're not sure what it is just yet, but one thing's certain, it's a giant enigma under the moon's surface. This massive beast is tucked away under the South Pole Aiken Basin, a colossal oval-shaped impact crater on the far side of the moon, stretching over 2,000 kilometers wide and plunging deep into the lunar ground. It's a relic from some cataclysmic event around 4 billion years ago. The moon's seen its fair share of cosmic smackdowns, and each one probably left behind a gravitational surprise package. Now, imagine this. You're a brave astronaut trying to land on the moon. You've got a tough job ahead. Those erratic gravitational quirks aren't the only challenge, but they sure make things interesting. The moon's gravitational roller coaster ride is definitely one for the record books. A brief history of failed moon landings. Back in the late 50s and early 60s, the moon was quite the enigma, and landing anything on it was like trying to hit a bullsley blindfolded. No surprise, most early attempts ended up in the cosmic junkyard of failure. Fast forward to 1966, NASA launched their Surveyor Program, a series of robotic moon landings that aimed to set the stage for the Apollo missions. Well, let's just say, their success rate wasn't exactly a confidence booster. One surveyor lost its cool mid-course, performing a spectacular crash landing. Another one ghosted us, cutting off radio contact with Earth just two minutes before touchdown. Talk about a lunar vanishing act. But here's where it gets exciting. Apollo missions, the human moon landings, never tasted failure. Why, you ask? It's because people can improvise on the spot, adapt to unexpected curveballs. Take Apollo 11, for instance. As their lunar module, the Eagle, veered off course, the onboard computer was basically lost in space. Neil Armstrong, our very own space cowboy, had to rely on his gut feeling, skill, and just a teensy bit of rocket fuel, landing on the moon in a nail-biting manual mode. Now imagine this. Not every moon landing has a Neil Armstrong in the cockpit. Robotic missions must follow a meticulous plan to a T, any hiccup, and failure is their cosmic companion. See, the moon is a hop, skip, and a jump away in cosmic terms, but you can't control a moonlander like a remote control car. 
the signal delay is about 2.5 seconds, and that's just not nimble enough to dodge lunar disasters. But what about Mars? Ever wondered why landing on the moon is such a head-scratcher? Well, hang on to your space helmets, cause this is where it gets mind-blowing. Now Mars, that's a whole different ballgame. NASA's been landing there for decades, which is kind of wild, considering it's way farther than our lunar neighbor. But the secret sauce is in the atmosphere. Mars might have a thin one, but it's thicker than what you'd find on the moon. The cool thing is that Martian air lets you use a parachute to slow things down. It's not a soft landing miracle on its own, but it gives your spacecraft a breather. And for the final touchdown, you can throw in some airbags to cushion the deal. But the moon? Nope, no atmosphere to help out. That means lunar landings are all about the rocket power, baby. Even SpaceX's Falcon 9, with its smooth landings, can't pull this off on the moon. They rely on Earth's atmosphere to control their descent. So, these lunar landers have to go from super speedy to a full stop with nothing but precise rocket maneuvers. It's like threading a cosmic needle, no matter how awesome you are. The Lunar South Pole. So, we've got a lunar mystery on our hands, and it's all happening at the South Pole of the Moon. Picture this. Back in the day, moon landings were all about taking the easy road, following the path of least resistance. But now, in the modern era, things are getting wild. Back in the day, the Soviets, in their lunar quest, took a daring approach. They didn't mess around. They aimed their probe smack dab at the center of the moon's visible side. Boom. Impact. Right in the bullseye, just about 30 degrees north of center. Fast forward to Apollo missions, and things got even crazier. We ditched the easy route and aimed for the moon's equator. Why, you ask? Well, it turns out, it made the whole journey more like a flat Earth to moon ping pong match. Imagine launching from the equator on Earth and hitting the moon's equator, smooth sailing, right? Back in 2019, the Chinese space wizards pulled off a jaw-dropping soft landing on the mysterious far side of the moon with their Chang'e 4 spacecraft. It was like stepping into a sci-fi movie. But that's just the beginning of the lunar adventure. Lately, a bunch of lunar missions have been giving the moon's south pole some serious attention. Why do you ask? Well, it's a hot spot for the future of human exploration, and here's why. It's believed to be packed with colossal ice deposits. And guess what? This ice isn't just for quenching your lunar thirst. Water, as you know, is made of oxygen and hydrogen, and we can use those for some pretty fantastic things. Oxygen for breathing, and hydrogen as fuel. That's some out of this world recycling, right? Now, the catch is, getting there isn't a piece of cake. It's like trying to thread a needle with a spacecraft, because we've got to place them in a polar orbit around the moon. But hey, we're up for the challenge. The Indian space heroes already showed us it's doable with their Chandrayaan-3 mission, but they had a little practice round with Chandrayaan-2. As they say, Failure is the first step to success. So, the moon's the limit, and we're learning as we go, one epic lunar mission at a time. You know what's super fascinating, folks? NASA's journey to the moon was no cakewalk. Back in the day, they had their fair share of oopsies. Initially, they couldn't stick the lunar landing, with only the last three out of nine Project Ranger missions from 1961 to 1965 making it a soft touchdown. Then came the Surveyor missions. Five out of seven smoothly touched down on the moon, showing some promising signs. But it was the Apollo missions that truly stole the show. Six of them made it to the moon without a hitch, and it was like poetry in motion. Fast forward 60 years, and we're in the 21st century moon race, heading to the South Pole. Even with our fancy computers and microchips, we still stumble sometimes. Remember, it's all part of the journey. You gotta trip a bit before you can dash. Remember, the moon is like an enigmatic treasure chest, and we're just beginning to scratch the surface. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and stay tuned with our channel. 
who knows what shocking revelations await us next.